There is a very terrifying hadith in Sahih Muslim. Anas ibn Malik said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, were it not for the fact that you would stop burying your dead, I would have made dua to Allah that you hear the adab al-qabr that I am able to hear. We are being told, if we could hear adab al-qabr, we would stop burying our dead. What are the specific causes of adab al-qabr that are mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah? Number one, which is the most obvious one, the kafir. And category two, which is the munafiq. These are the only two that are mentioned in the Quran. There is no reference whatsoever of the adab al-qabr for the believer in the Quran. We only learn this from the Sunnah. Now, the fact that the Quran only mentions adab al-qabr for the kafir and munafiq, and it is the hadith that mentions adab al-qabr for some of the sinful, just from this, inshallah, we can derive that the adab al-qabr for the believer is not to the level, not to the severity of the adab al-qabr for the kafir and the munafiq. Number three, the number one issue mentioned for the believer, not cleaning after using the restroom. Our Prophet ﷺ passed by two qabrs next to him. And he said, these two are being punished, but they are not being punished for big things. Then he said, no, they are big things. As for one of them, he would not protect himself from his own urine. And the other version says, he would not allow his urine to basically finish. And so it would drop out and would leave Najasa over there. And in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, our Prophet ﷺ said, the majority of Al-Adab Al-Qabr comes from urine. Why is this such a big deal? Because it indicates a complete and utter carelessness about Tahara. And Tahara is the key to Salah. And Salah is the pillar and the crux and the backbone of all good deeds. So when a person becomes lax about Tahara, this is a frame of mind that he's lax about Salah. And when you're lax about Salah, what do you expect then? If it so happens that you are forced to use the restroom in a public area and you're not able to purify yourself in the proper manner. In this case, make sure that you're able to get home and change your clothes and wash yourself before salah. So to be in a state of a little bit of najis on your clothing temporarily, that is not going to cause you any sin. The sin is to pray in that state. Number four, the same hadith of the two, that he passed by two people in the grave. They're being punished for some things that are not big, rather they are big. As for one of them, he would not protect himself from the boat. As for the other, he would be walking between people with namima. Now, in both of these cases, these two people were habitual in what they did. The adab al-qabr is not for the one-off from the hadith. He made it his lifestyle. He was known to be tattletale. And what is namima? Namima is to hear something that is said about someone in one gathering and then to go tell him with the intention of making problems, causing issues between him and the other person. So you're in one gathering and something was said that should not have been said. And that's basically ghiba. The ghiba is bad, it's haram enough. But if the ghiba remains in that room, the damage is internal. When the ghiba is taken back to the person, this is called namima. And namima is worse than ghiba because namima is what ends up doing the damage. As for ghiba in and of itself, that is haram. And you know what Allah says about it in the Quran. And the sin is between the person and Allah. But if that ghiba remains in that room, then it's not going to destroy the bonds. Namima is tattletaling the ghiba back to that person. And this is obviously haram. Number five, in one version of the hadith or a similar hadith or a different one, we're not sure exactly. Our Prophet ﷺ mentioned that he passed by two graves and he said, as for the other one, he was somebody who would do ghiba. And ghiba and namima are two circles that overlap. Every namima has to have a ghiba. And in that hadith, he put two branches in the graves. And he said, as long as these branches are moist, their adha will be lifted up for them. The sixth point, kibr or arrogance and pride. Hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Our Prophet ﷺ said, there was once a man who was walking in a cloak of finery, in a cloak that he's boastful and arrogant about, impressed with himself having combed his hair finely, walking about yatabattar. It means he has kibr in him. He thinks he is it, right? And as he's walking around with that sense of pride, Allah caused the earth to open up and swallow him. And he will continue to be swallowed and descending until qiyamah. Until qiyamah means where is he being punished? In the qabr. 
So the one who had kibr in his heart, a'udhu billah. The one who had arrogance, this person as well, he has the potential to be subjugated to adab al-qabr. Number seven, wailing over the dead. Umar ibn Khattar radiallahu anhu, when he was stabbed and he was bleeding to death and he was taken to his room and the doctor said to him, Alas, we cannot save you. One of the companions, Suhaib, Ar-Rumi entered in and he began to cry and he said wa akha wa sahiba oh what a tragedy this is oh how am i going to live after this oh the loss of a noble brother umar ibn khattab radiyallahu an while he's bleeding to death he literally has a few hours left he says oh suhaib are you crying over me and don't you know that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the dead person is punished. The mayyit is punished for some of the crying that the people do over him. So he forbade him to wail and cry. Some have said, this is something that the mayyit will be punished for if he made it a habit that in his family, there will be wailing over the dead. And he didn't stop that. So when he dies, then he will be punished. Then why didn't you stop your own family from doing this sin? This is one interpretation. What is wailing? Wailing is not the same as crying. Everybody should know. Our Prophet ﷺ cried multiple times because of death. He cried when he visited his mother's grave, Amina, and his beard became wet. And he cried when his son Ibrahim was about to pass away. Crying is a rahmah that Allah places in the hearts of his servants. This is an authentic hadith. Point number eight, stealing the ghanima of the battlefield. And this is an authentic hadith Bukhari and Muslim in the issue of the battle of Uhud that somebody died on the battle of Uhud and the Sahaba praised him and they said, oh, he died a shaheed. Good luck to him or congratulations to him. And our Prophet said, no, he is being punished right now because the cloak that he stole and didn't declare because you have to declare anything you take, it must be declared. You cannot just hide something in your pocket and go away. This is a type of stealing from the common good. He stole something before he died a martyr. And our Prophet ﷺ said, that cloak that he stole, it is wrapped around him and it is burning him right now in Jahannam. Point number nine, dying in a state of debt. And our Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge in Allah from غَلَبَةُ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ rijal, From having debt that is overpowering. We should try our best to live debt-free to brothers and sisters. And only take qard if we really need it and ask Allah to help us pay it off immediately. Our Prophet ﷺ said, hadith is in Ibn Majah, the ruh of the mu'min is mu'allaq, is suspended back until his debt is paid off. So our scholars mention, this is a type of adab. His ruh is not in peace. It's not here, it's not there. It's not in its mustaqar, its final place. So the ruh is held back and it is in a state of anxiety until the debt is paid off. When a person's janazah came to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ asked, does he have a debt? Jibreel must have told him because he usually did not ask this. They said, yes, he does. So he said, then I will not pray. Somebody else pray for him. So one of them said, Ya Rasulullah, I will pay off his debt. Can you pray for him? So then he prayed for him. This was to make the point clear to all of us. Don't take debt something light. Number 10, 11, 12, and 13. Four of them, they are mentioned in one hadith. And these are eating riba and lying and zina and not praying on time. Samura ibn Judnub narrates that whenever the Prophet prayed Fajr, he would turn around and he would ask us, who amongst you saw a dream last night? And if anybody saw a dream, we would tell him that dream. And so one day he said, instead of asking them, he said, I saw a dream last night. Two men came to me and they took me to Al Ard al Muqaddasa, the holy land. And then he said, I saw a person sitting down and there was a man standing on him and he was hitting him with a scalp or a type of knife and carving one side of the head. Then he would turn the other side and do the same. By the time he did it on the other side, the first side would be cured. So then keep on doing this back and forth. So I said, what is the matter with this man? They said, keep on going. So they kept on going. So we saw another man, he was lying down on his back and another man was hitting him with a rock. And whenever the rock hit him, the rock would roll away. The first man would 
would go after the rock. In the meantime, the first one would be cured. He would then come back and hit him again. I said, what is this? They said, keep on going. And again, he saw a pit of fire in it that was shaped like a cylinder. And there were men and women upside down and there was fire in it. And they would come up as the fire went. Then the fire would come down and they would come down. They would go up and down and so on and so forth. Then he said, I saw a person that was at a river of blood and another man was standing on one side and a person in the middle of the river every time that the person came to try to get out of the blood of river he would be hit with a rock so he would be pushed back and this would also be going on and on so I said who is this they said keep on going then we kept on going until I saw a beautiful garden with a large tree in it and there was an elderly man and lots of children around him and there was in front of this man also a fire and they told me to come and I went into this garden and I saw a house it was more beautiful than any house I had seen then at the end he says the Prophet ﷺ said to the two of them you have taken me on a long journey now explain to me what I saw so then the angels explain as for the one that you saw his head being split this was the one who would lie about others and his lie would spread everywhere in other words this is namima and ghiba and slander bohtan on top of that it's hurting the honor of families it is breaking the marriage of people so this will be done to him until judgment day as for the one whom you saw that his head was being crushed open, this was a person whom Allah taught the Quran to, yet he would sleep the whole night and he would not act upon it during the day. And this is going to happen to him until judgment day. And as for the one whom you saw that the men and women were hanging upside down, these are the people of zina. And as for the one you saw swimming in the river of blood, these were the people who ate riba. And as for the old man you saw with children around him, that was Ibrahim. And the children around him were the young kids who passed away without reaching bulugh. You know that in our tradition, Ibrahim and Sarah will take care of any toddler, any infant who has passed away. They will be their caretakers until they're reunited with a Jannah. And as for the house that you saw, that is your house. And as for me, this is Jibreel. And as for him, this is Mikael. So the Prophet wasallam said, can I enter my house? And they said, no, you still have life left in this dunya. When that life is over, then you can enter the house. Then I woke up. Now, this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. It mentions buhtan. It mentions eating riba. It mentions zina. And it mentions the one who knows the Quran but sleeps at night. Now, our scholars say that this is the one who does not wake up for fajr. This is the meaning of sleep the whole night because it is not wajib to pray tahajjud. It's not about tahajjud. It is about sleeping the whole night until the sun comes up means what? He missed fajr. Right? So the one who does not pray fajr. From all of these points, it is correct to extrapolate that any major sin can lead to adab of the qabr.